ongoing coverage of that story uh, throughout the day. But in the meantime, let's check in right now with a top doctor in Ontario, Kieran Moore, with an update on COVID-19 in Canada's biggest province on this Thursday. Let's listen in. De notre santé mentale, notre our mental -être health and well-being and our means of sustenance. I thank the Ontario population for the sacrifices they made. I know it wasn't easy. While we know COVID-19 is not going away, we are in a very different place than we were two years ago. We have greater knowledge and experience in how this virus behaves and what uh, works to stop its transmission. We have tools that we have not had before. We have highly effective vaccines that have changed the course of this pandemic, and we have effective treatments for those at risk of getting very sick. Our vaccination rates are amongst the best in the world, with over 90% of Ontarians aged 12 and over with two doses. We continue to make progress in our vaccination campaign for our 5 to 11-year-olds, 54% have one dose and over 24% have two doses. And over 6.7 million Ontarians have received their booster dose. Many of you heard the call for arms. By rolling up your sleeves, you have not only protected yourselves from serious illness and hospitalization, you have also helped our dedicated frontline healthcare providers by reducing the burden on our healthcare system. While the risk remains, this commitment has paid off and means that we can continue to ease some of the public health restrictions today and again on March 1st. En vous faisant vacciner, By getting non vaccinated, not only did you protect yourself from severe illness and hospitalization, but you also helped health care workers, frontline workers, who continue to work hard by reducing the burden on the healthcare system. While risk continues to exist, your commitment has borne fruit, and we can now continue to lift a few health restrictions today, and again on March 1st. ...measures allows our society to start enjoying the things that improve our well-being, but it also means continuing with Ontario's staged, phased, cautious and evidence-based approach. This includes keeping our masks on a while longer and that health and safety plans are in place to keep public spaces safe for all of us. As we move forward, COVID-19 vaccines continue to remain a cornerstone of our plan to manage this virus. As of 8 a.m. tomorrow, February 18th, Ontario is expanding booster dose eligibility to youth aged 12 to 17. Appointments can be booked through the Provincial Booking System and the Provincial Vaccine Contact Centre, as well as pharmacies administering the Pfizer vaccine. A compter du vendredi, Starting 18 février à Friday, 18 February at 8 o'clock, Ontario will widen the eligibility for the booster shot for youth aged 12 to 17. It will be possible to make an appointment through the provincial system for appointment booking for vaccination, as well as in participating pharmacies that administer the Pfizer vaccine. can be booked for six months or 168 days after a second dose. Boosters are an effective means of reducing your likelihood of becoming seriously ill from COVID-19. There is also now good evidence that vaccination cuts your risk of developing long COVID syndrome in half. Even if you have had COVID in the past, getting vaccinated is still recommended as it provides better protection against future infection. And it's never too late to get vaccinated with your first, second or booster dose. We have in observed continued improvements in stabilization and key public health and health system indicators. The percent positivity continues to decrease and new admissions to hospital and ICU have been declining week over week. These are, there are also continued decreases in the number of outbreaks in high-risk settings such as hospitals and long-term care homes. Once again, I want to thank Ontarians for their incredible sacrifices. Your collective efforts have allowed us to get back to where we are today. 
our plan to get here has always been data-driven, and the decisions that we make will continue to be based on the best science and evidence. The risk remains, and we re must remain nimble in our response and be ready to respond to new risks in a manner that minimizes severe outcomes and impacts on our health system while limiting any further disruption of every person's daily lives. Thank you. Merci. Go to the phone lines for questions. Just a reminder, it's one question, one follow-up. Over to the first question, please. Your first question comes from Richard Southern with City News 680. Please go ahead. Hi, Dr. Moore. Thanks for taking my question. Doctor, aside from yourself, Ontarians have turned to the Premier for advice on what to do during the pandemic. This past Tuesday, the Premier suggested there was little value in further rounds of vaccination. Without pointing out that it reduced hospitalizations, the Premier said, quote, we also know that it doesn't matter if you have one shot or 10 shots, you can still catch COVID-19. Doctor, do you think that comment was appropriate coming from the Premier? Well, I can understand his concern, uh, and it's about the protection of the vaccine against transmission, and uh, it has been excellent against all the original strains of, against, of uh, COVID, so Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta. It's less effective against Omicron against transmission. The good news is for this vaccine that uh, the protection is excellent against severe outcomes, uh, and I think that is what really needs to get highlighted. Uh, a third dose is over 90 percent effective against admission to hospital, admission to the intensive care unit, and or death. Two doses is still excellent, but three doses are better. Two doses is around 80% effective against severe outcomes, hospitalization, ICU, and death. So I think that's the story that really needs to get told. Yes, uh, the vaccine with three doses is around 60% uh, protective against uh, getting symptomatic COVID-19 disease, uh, but it's excellent against the severe outcomes. Follow-up. As we begin to loosen some restrictions today, we're learning that uh, wastewater analysis shows that the reduction in cases has plateaued. Can you speak to that? And does that give you any concern right now, doctor? No, uh, I mean, I think that's excellent news. If you look at the epidemic curve of that data, it really shows we've reached our peak several weeks ago, uh, and that correlates to our uh, rise in admissions to hospital, which peaked in the third week of January, and they've been coming down ever since. So uh, yes, they're plateauing, um, but they're plateauing at a very low level. Uh, and hence, I do think that the, the, the peak in risk and the peak in activity of Omicron is behind us. There remains a risk. There remains a risk of transmission every day, and hence the need uh, to continue to wear our masks at present. But we'll, we'll review the evidence of when we can further reduce that, that public health measure measure of, of masking in public spaces, uh, and everyone should make a risk assessment, especially if you're vulnerable to this virus, if you're elderly or immune suppressed. Um, please uh, continue to come forward and get vaccinated as it protects against all the severe outcomes. But um, uh, I think the worst is behind us, but there is an ongoing risk. I don't think, uh, and, and I've had conversations with those experts from the science table, will have a significant rebound in activity or impact on our health care system. I do think the worst is behind us. Next question. Your next question comes from Charlie Pinkerton with Queen's Park Briefing. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, uh, Dr. Moore. Um, as part of the government's plan to end its uh, mandatory proof of vaccination system on um, March the 1st. I'm of the understanding that uh, the vaccine mandates and, and soft vaccine mandates for um, other professions um, will continue. Um, have you begun thinking about when these should be ended? Um, and, you know, if so, could you sort of explain your where you currently stand um, on on these requirements? Well, thanks very much for that question. Yes, we're reviewing all directives and letters of instruction that we put in place uh, across multiple sectors uh, in Ontario. Uh, we do uh, think the, the highest risk is behind us, that we're heading into a lower risk environment, uh, and that the need uh, for uh, vaccination policies um, across Ontario uh, sectors, whether it's health or in colleges and universities, uh, is no longer necessary. So we've started those conversations just in the last couple of days uh, of when we will remove the immunization policy requirement for colleges and universities, for other workplace settings, uh, as well as in the healthcare system. I do think we should align 
their removal with the removal at a population level, so on March 1st. Uh, that may be early for some organizations, but that's my goal, is to have those immunization policies removed uh, by the 1st. They have done their, uh, uh, their intended purpose, was, was to improve immunization, to further protect Ontarians. I thank all Ontarians that have come forward to get vaccinated, uh, but they have served their purpose to protect us. Uh, and as any public health measure, they have to be removed in a timely manner. Follow up. Yeah, so sorry, sorry. Am I following you correctly then that these other, again, what, I, what I'd ask about the, the other vaccine mandates for professions, essentially, um, that they could be gone as soon as March 1st? And then just on top of that, you know, various public health measures have come and gone during the pandemic, of course. Um, once the proof of vaccination system goes away, being likely the you know most significant, more one of the most significant measures brought to date um, by the government, do you ever see yourself recommending it return, or 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 is that it for this system? So I, I just want to make sure we're on the same page. Uh, we, we have not mandated immunizations. Uh, we have uh, mandated that organizations have immunization policies. So that's typically uh, get immunized, get educated regarding the benefits and risks of the vaccine and or have a testing strategy. So that uh, recommend uh, that mandate to have an immunization policy will, uh, it's my intent uh, together with negotiation with partners to have them removed by March 1st. Uh, and um, I, I think that's prudent. It follows the removal of proof of uh, immunization uh, uh, for other venues. So uh, I think it's timely to remove them for businesses. It, there may be mandates uh, uh, by organizations that are you know, not government uh, that would want to have a testing strategy uh, continue, especially if they have a high risk uh, setting. Uh, and uh, I'll just also be particular that the, the there was a mandate uh, for vaccination in long-term care facilities by the minister. Um, uh, that is separate, uh, as it wasn't a directive by, um, by, by the Chief Medical Officer Health Office. Next question. Your next question comes from Holly McKenzie Suter with the Canadian Press. Please go ahead. Hi, Dr. Moore. I want to talk about the, uh, the pace of the reopening plan. Uh, the latest version had uh, 21 days between each step, and you've said repeatedly that's a good and cautious way to monitor the impacts of each step, but now we're less than two weeks away before all capacity limits and the vaccine certificates end. We're not going to have that much time to monitor the impacts of the changes today. So could you just explain what the rush is with this, especially looking at the, the wastewater data? Wastewater data has come down significantly. So uh, we, we are now, if you recall, we uh, put public health measures in on January 5th. Uh, we then opened schools on the 17th, so there was roughly 12-day you know, 12, 12 separation. Uh, we then further opened the economy again on the 31st, um, so another two-week separation. We then made a 17-day separation. So we're always following the data and the science. Uh, I'm just so pleased uh, that uh, our hospitalization rates are coming down very rapidly. They went up rapidly, and, and now they're coming down in a very quick descent. And remembering hospitalization is a late Later signal. Uh, so I do think the risk is less at a population level. I, I do think we're, the worst is behind us. Uh, and I think following the data, uh, uh, any public health measure should be uh, as short as possible. Uh, it limits people's freedoms and rights. Uh, and we have to be responsive uh, to, to, to that and the implications of public health measures. Uh, so uh, we've always said that they should be proportionate uh, to the risk and balanced in their response. Uh, and I think uh, uh, shortening it by three to four days this time from the 21st to the 17th was reasonable uh, and, and because we're having such a rapid descent and I do anticipate that we won't have any significant rebound in, in risk uh, to hospitalization that we can continue uh, a, a, at a two-week March um, to, to March 1st uh, to open up more broadly.